Finally back after however many monarchs and prime ministers. Talking of Englishmen, there is a lot of talk in professional wrestling right now about the contractual status and future of one William Regal. Kind of ironic, um, part of what I did when I didn't really mean to, but I take this kind of elongated YouTube break, was to attend the Inside the Ropes Gentleman Villain, an afternoon with William Regal event. This was at the Classic Grand in Glasgow on October 1st, and it was a really good show. Uh, we had travel issues, which put a bit of a dampener on our day a little bit, but the show itself was really good. Uh, you know, Regal does a, the podcast with Matt Coon, which is where they, they borrowed the name from. I had to admit, I kind of put off and I, I haven't had the opportunity to sit down and listen to some of the episodes I really want to. I've listened to quite a few of the episodes, but I kind of put off at the time listening to some of the episodes because I didn't want to... I, I know... Re, uh, I kind of really know Regal's story uh, already, of course, because I really became aware of William Regal in 1993 when he joined WCW and I've followed him since. Did have meet and greet tickets, unfortunately, but uh, you know I didn't want to for him to cover a lot of what he did in the podcast on the show as well. So listened to it twice. Um, I kind of put myself off listening to the podcast. And Regal though is uh, the show itself, and Regal is really good, informative, really really funny at times, highly educational. Uh, he talked about. It basically kind of highlights of his career from moving to the United States in 1993 with WCW through to basically present day. We missed the last couple of minutes of fan questions, but wasn't much uh, apparently in that. Uh, but it was a really good... Some of the stories he told was hilarious, especially the Dave Taylor stories, who's another English wrestler uh, who is one of his best friends. Travelling with him, getting, sto uh, getting stopped by an American police officer. Stories of Dave Taylor's sister-in-law. Uh, just a lot of really funny, brilliant to it. If you get the opportunity to see William Regal live, if he's going to do any of these going forward, depending on what his decision is, I would highly recommend go to see that. And I say regarding his decision because... A lot of people have really gotten to recognise the contributions and the knowledge and experience that William Regal has had over this past 10 odd years. From his work backstage with WWE, NXT, talent scouting, putting various different tournaments together, uh, being kind of basically almost the genesis a little bit in one way of talent wise at least of NXT UK and what could potentially be NXT Europe, and I think that's partly maybe why WWE want him back, is to maybe, look, I don't know how far they're getting into talent or how far they're putting NXT Europe together so far, but I think that's something he could certainly contribute to. And he, you know, people have become basically aware of, of how valuable an asset William Regal is to whatever company he is working for. Uh, I believe at the time of recording, he's maybe in Wales, I think, doing a Comic-Con. And I'm sure you'll get people asking him what he's doing. Um, uh, I'm recording this Saturday evening, so he probably had people asking him, well, what are you doing? Are you going back to WWE? Are you going back to AEW? To be honest, I think Regal is the kind of professional that we won't know until we know. Uh, Regal is open and honest, as he says on the podcast. He does tell stories about Sid, about WCW, about WWE. You know, his own failings as well, his own personal battles that he's had. He's very open and honest about these kind of things. But I think, firmly, William Regal is the prof kind of professional that he will not say exactly what he's doing until he's doing it. Whether that's staying with AEW and the Blackpool Combat Club, and I'll talk about that in a second. But I think Regal is a professional that we will know what, what he's doing maybe when he appears. Um, wherever he, if he is going to WWE, if he appears there or starts working behind the scenes there, we'll get to know that. 
and I think Regal is the kind of professional that I think part of the enticement to go to a place like AEW is to pass on his knowledge and experience to a lot of the wrestlers that he's not connected with before. Uh, obviously, he's been very instrumental in some of their career, like John Moxley, Daniel Bryan especially. He's gotten to know these guys. He's gotten to pass on his knowledge and experience. But there's a lot of other talent in the AEW locker rooms that he hasn't been able to connect with before now. And so to, I think something that really uh, got his interest in terms of working with AEW, because as he said before, he was maybe thinking about just taking a break from the industry for a while, maybe a year or two, chill out, relax, because obviously he's been on, he's been wrestling since uh, you know the 1980s, on the go all the time, so he wanted to take at least a year or so off. And I think part of what really enticed him to, and I know we use that word a lot, but what really got his attention to go to AEW was to pass on his knowledge and experience to another who hold new locker room uh, and help bring their talent forward. Which so and that is a great thing to obviously have. And as again, one of the reasons why he is proclaimed, uh, why he's saw. A, as a very valuable asset to any company that he goes. So he's a professional. I think once he makes his decision, if his contract is indeed up, if he is moving to WWE or he's staying in AEW, we will get to know that when that decision is made, when any contract is signed, uh, we will obviously get to know it at some stage. Because let even say in January, whether that contract is for one year or it's further on, we will know it. One of the things that he is a, a professional is about, uh, and one of the things I think it would be a shame if he did leave AEW, and I will admit I haven't sat down and really watched a ton of AEW television wrestling matches. I haven't really watched a lot of full shows lately of wrestling, uh, unfortunately, just other things. But one thing that I think is a shame is if he does leave within the storyline. At the time of recording, last I saw Regal on AEW TV, uh, saw the clip, uh, the kind of segment on YouTube, was that Regal got left laying by Maxwell Jacob Friedman, MJF, who is the current AEW World Champion. Now, Regal is poorly turned on John Moxley, who's been a member of the Blackpool Combat Club, and Regal cost Moxley that championship. I have thought of a multitude of ways the last few days of how that storyline could actually have continued, or could continue, if Regal has stayed in AEW. Um, I won't go into all of them, but a couple of the ways I thought would be potentially, you know, to recruit MGF. You know, uh, whether it's Regal and MGF playing out something, whether it's the whole Blackpool Combat Club playing out something and really end up um, recruiting MGF to be a member... Or it could be a whole work thing between MJ uh, between Regal and John Moxley to allow MJF to build himself up to be world champion to achieve his dreams of being world champion, and then simply squash it. Then turning around, revealing it was all a swerve, and squashing MJF like a bug, just because he there, uh, just because he's their enemy. There's quite a few multitudes of different ways that I've thought about this storyline continuing and I think Regal obviously in that storyline that whole situation would be very very intricate uh, intricate, um, an integral part of that storyline I honestly I'm not sure what Regal is going to do Uh, I'm going to get if I had to give my opinion I I really don't know Uh, again it depends on what William Regal is thinking about he spoke during that show in Glasgow about being kind of an older guy, an older guy, you know, he said he had these battles, uh, you know, doesn't know how long in life he's got left. And he says that on a regular basis. Hopefully he's got many, many, many years to go uh, around for a long, long time. And I think that's kind of part of it. Where does he see himself? Uh, depending on what the kind of... Because I think he's getting to the stage where... Maybe he wants a bit of a lighter schedule. Um, you know, 
it's that old saying in a, in a wrestler that the mind is still willing, but perhaps the body is not. He's had his health issues, of course. So it depends on that as well. What is WWE offering? What do they want him to do? He's not a young guy anymore, unfortunately. You know, he's obviously retired from in-ring competition. So I think it's, he's going to have to take a serious look at what... And I think he is one of the guys, to be honest, that deserves it. If anyone could, has the should have the opportunity, especially in a bidding kind of bidding thing like this, if WWE truly does want to sign him again, you know, again Triple H relationship and so forth, but AEW maybe wants to keep him. I think Regal is the kind of guy that should be allowed to decide what he wants his future to be. And again, the professionalism. If he's got to AEW, he spent this year in AEW, and it's not been for whatever reason what he wanted it to be, he's not going to say that. He's not going to say, oh, well, there's this, you know, there was this, there's no communication in the locker room or there's this that doesn't work or there's that that doesn't work or this it's not the atmosphere that I would like it to be or there's political things that I'm banging my head against a brick wall and so I'm heading back to WWE because at least I know how things work there, even though things have changed, but if anyone deserves to have the opportunity to decide his future, it's William Regal. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he does. He'll be an asset either way, whether it's WWE, AEW, whatever Regal decides, he will definitely be a tremendous asset in front of the camera and behind the scenes no matter what role he does. So certainly I would recommend checking out the Gentleman Villain podcast that he does with Matt Coon certainly uh, downloads of the episodes because if he does disappear he, uh, he we, we might see him disappear from the podcast unfortunately uh, or the podcast disappear depending on where he goes what he does but certainly hopefully wherever William Regal goes whoever is running whatever company genuinely appreciates him. <laughs>